All right. Welcome back to another hour of Scott Shower. I'm Noah. And I'm Jesse. All right, Jesse. So um, just uh, basically start off like we normally do. How was your week? Uh, it was a, a pretty good week. Um, got to spend some really good quality time with my kiddos this past weekend. Played some basketball with Aiden. Mila, Aiden, and I all went on a hike. Um, and we got to watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, a few <laughs> other movies. So it was, it was really good. And, of course, like our thing is every Friday after dinner, we each get our own pint of ice cream and go to town. Nice, Dad. So I'm guessing the movie with the ice cream was Ferris Bueller's? That's right. I'm not sure if that's the best movie for kids. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really good topic of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it gives the best message to uh, uh, children getting ready to go into high school or already in high school. Uh, yeah, 14 and 17-year-old. Yeah, it was an interesting yeah. movie. As we watched it, I... Wait, Mila's 17? Dude, I know. So wait, when did she go to college? Is she is she again? Is she like one of the ones that go when at like at seventeen or like at she 18? she would go at eighteen? She has to decide if she's going to take a little bit of time before she goes, what she's going to do. Um, but yeah, next year she is a senior. Remember senior year? That was a good year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well we won't go there right now. <laughs> uh, we definitely had some fun. Always. Uh, had some really, really good times as a, as a senior. I had some great memories. Um, but, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll leave that right there. All right. We'll come back to Ferris Bueller's Day Off here in a little bit. How was your week? Uh, definitely had some hurdles. Um, you, you always know uh, when you uh, blend a spoon to begin the week. There you go. <laughs> it yeah. probably is going to be a rough week. Yeah. Hey, that's some extra iron in that protein <laughs> shake there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there, there's definitely some challenges, but um, all in all, uh, it's one it's one of those weeks where um, I have to work on the weekends and uh, teach my life insurance class there. So no, no, no rest for the wicked. That's right. And, uh, yeah, so that's that. Okay. Um, I guess what I'll go with here. Uh, I'm just going to just jump right into it uh, so we don't spend too, too much yeah. time. So uh, last week, uh, as you know, it was uh, definitely <laughs> a, a challenge for me, and it was a, a hard week, I guess, in that sense. And uh, we have a lost episode. Uh, the episode that we recorded last week, which was episode 10, should have been one of our – it should have been an epic episode. And uh, it was a crazy one, though, because, uh, first of all, I, I forgot uh, the power cord to our uh, – <laughs> to our mixer so we couldn't use the studio mics and that was the first time we got to use our wireless mics um i believe we had a uh, the amount of time that we did our show was about two to two and a half hours yeah it was a pretty long show <laughs> it was a pretty long show <laughs> and uh everything was broken up into at least as far as like audio goes into like half hour blocks um from the wireless mics and our video oddly enough when we went to go download it and put it onto the computer and everything, there was only two files, but there is some missing footage. Dun dun dun. dun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's it's been a it's been a real challenge to try to get that uh, produced and in the can and uploaded for all of our our wonderful uh, listeners. But um, I do believe we'll I'll still find some bits and pieces to salvage and we'll make we'll just call that the last episode of ten. There we go. Lost episode 10. Lost episode 10. So just kind of recap of what we did on that. Um, what was the uh, the scotch that we had on there? All right. That was the Glen Morangi. Um, we actually had a tasting of four of their scotches. We did the 10-year scotch, their standard, their 12-year scotch, which was finished in a sherry cask, their 14-year scotch, which was finished in a port cask, and the Nectar Dior. Yes, it was a, it was, it was, really, it was kind of a nice little like gift type of thing that was set up. Uh, made it for a nice flight. Yes. And... Uh, if I recall, my favorite one actually ended up being the Sauter, and I really enjoyed that one being really sweet. But my close second was the port. Yes. The one aged in the port cask. Uh, I, I, it really had the nice hints of that uh, you'd pick up from a good aged tawny. Uh, the color was pretty similar or had some color to it. 
Uh, and I really enjoyed that. I think yours was a little bit different, though. Or did you have the? I can't remember which way you rated those. You know, the I was also the Nectar Dior was fantastic. I don't know how else to describe it. I'm like a dessert, and oh, definitely. Well, you know, Sauternes, which is his <laughs> age in the Sauternes cask, um, Sauternes French wines have that nice um, sweetness to them. Yeah, it was fantastic. All right. So besides that. Last week, we talked a little bit about our investments. That's right. That is right. We did do a smarter challenge. Smarter <laughs> challenges. That was your, that was your smarter challenge yes. to me uh, or to the both of us. To uh, We're going to take $100, pretend like it was 100000 invest it into whatever we wanted. And uh, I believe my breakdown, I went all crypto. You did. And uh, the way I went was um, $30 into XRP. Yes. $35 into VeChain and $35 into Harmony One. And um, my net, uh, I'll just, just to sum it up and keep this part <laughs> short, uh, my net gain, so I did have a net gain for the week. One week, week one. Week one, my net gain was $4.09. That's pretty outstanding. You and got. And my, and, and my number one earner was Harmony One, where I earned $7.54. My biggest loser, VeChain, where I lost $5.68. All right. Well, myself, I split it up a little bit different. I uh, split mine up. Ulta, 25%. Target, 25%. Ferrari goes under the ticker race, 25%. And XRP, 25%. And my net gain, also a gain, was three dollars and ninety two cents. My biggest uh, winner was XRP. So also a crypto um, of the three stocks. It was Ulta, and I'm gonna, you know, I believe that one's gonna keep moving up. I think that as this mask mandate fades away and it is abolished, uh, people are gonna want their faces to look pretty. Probably, yeah, probably so. You know, start seeing women wear more lips, lipstick. Is that, that that's your that's your claim, right? That's my claim. That is my. That was the whole reason why you went with with Alta. That is twenty five percent. Why not like Avon or whatever, whatever the other makeup places? You know, I just have a really good feeling about Alta right now. All right, all right. Sounds they good. they also typically position their buildings, in, you know, in the same parking lot as a Target. So, I didn't realize that. Yeah, are at they least, at least here in Colorado? It's very common. Are they like uh, sister companies or something? Or nope, nope. Huh. All right. Yeah. So I guess if you see a Target, you will see an Alta most likely. That's right. Another thing we talked about last week so far, minus the missing episode, of course, <laughs> our favorite episode that we had done so yes. far. So last week's uh, last week was the missing episode ten. <laughs> 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 and uh, we did. You're right. We did talk about what was each of our favorite episodes from our first nine episodes since that was, you know, that was our 10th one. So what was your favorite episode? I, as a quick I think recap? I believe we both went with episode three. That was your favorite? Yeah. I don't recall you saying that that was your favorite last yeah. time. I loved episode three. I, I, you know, and here's. Maybe it's because I felt like we were a little bit more loosey goosey on that one. You know, might have been, might have been. I, because, like, what I think, uh, <laughs> I, I could be wrong, but I think we had finished two bottles of wine before <sighs> we even filmed. Yeah. And so we're feeling pretty loose at that point. And, and the then, scotch just flowed. <laughs> and the scotch just, just flowed. And for those of you who didn't watch uh, or don't know which episode, episode three is, that's the one where we talked about hairdressers. Yeah, services, tipping. Service, <laughs> tipping, uh, uh, doing a holiday bonus. Yes. Right? And uh, I'm sorry, I just had so much fun uh, making, uh, I, I know I know your hairdresser <laughs> was, is, is, was awesome. You really he, enjoyed going to him. He is amazing. Uh, but the way, uh, the way I heard you say his name, it sounded like a stripper name to me, and it just I just kind of went off on the whole like, as he dance on a pole and no, you put like uh, tips up his G Street? No, or no, no, none of that, none of that. <laughs> I, had, I had a great time talking about that. Uh, <laughs> Second hey. favorite episode, though, for me was the one where we really got a chance to dig in. We took a chance to dig in and compare who's the better man and who's the better pilot. And See, I think that's what you remember. That is what I remember. I remember you talking about Iceman versus uh, Maverick. Yes. 
Yeah, that's a that was a good episode. Um, yeah, that, that was a good one. All right. Anything else that is a flag from last week? Uh, flag from last week. Favorite episode, scotch, investments. We covered all that. That was a recap. We're on target. All right. And you gave me a challenge. Um, and Oh, yeah. So last week's cha- uh, smarter challenges was that you had to pick from a list of topics. Uh, and we we're going to discuss them this, this episode. Yes. Um, and I believe the list of topics were Project Looking Glass. Correct. Uh, Dungway and Area 51, that was together as tied into one topic. Correct. Project Mockingbird. Yes. And Project, I can't remember what the last one was. It was just those ones? Blue Book. Blue Book. Yes. Okay. All right. And I went with... Mostly because I knew little bits and pieces of them. Project Looking Glass and Area 51 in Dunway. Okay. So um, before we jump into uh, last week's uh, Smarter Challenge. Smarter Challenge. Let's go ahead and uh, dive into our scotch. What do we have on the docket? This week we are venturing back to a Game of Thrones Scotch. This one is the you know House nothing. Stark. <laughs> you know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> yeah. This is the Winter's Frost edition by Dalwini. Um, no specific age on this one, but we're hoping it leads us well. You know, the color of that one right there reminds me of his wilding girlfriend. Really? <laughs> I mean, the one with the red hair. I, you know, she is. That's a, his real his real life wife. I too. know. Can you imagine? Ooh. I'm right I think she she you. she looks like a beautiful woman. Uh, that's more than a look. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like you don't know how people are in real life, you know. But I would say, uh, you know, from from what I know from the TV show, she's. She looks like she might be a... I mean, he was a hot commodity. He had an extremely high market value when that show was out. Yeah, he did. So, uh, you know, I think he had his pick. I think Our, he did. Uh, Darth and Vader. Darth Vader. Dom, In dom, the house. Dom, 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 dom. I got to always do that. I don't know why. I love Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> now, except, except for uh, the uh, sequel trilogies. I think those are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing I noted about Dalwini is that it is the highest elevation of a distillery with a visitor center. Okay, so that's uh, does Dalwini have more than one one uh, distillery, or is that the only only one? As far as I was able to. Find out they only have the one, 1,154 and, feet. And you're going with a, with a... Yes. So another interesting thing about the Dow Winnie distillery is that because of its location so high up in Speyside, it's also the coldest distillery. Okay. And we're going to keep it true to its nature. Um, sometimes when I've experienced lots of different alcohols, some wines, definitely cognacs, when they the spirit goes through those temperature changes up and down, it brings out a lot of flavor. So I've got some hope on this one that the ice is the right way to go. Okay, because like it's not very normal that you would take a rock with yours. I mean, at least... For any of the, anybody, anybody who's been watching our last, I'm, I'm going to say 10 episodes because <laughs> uh, we did have a Star Wars uh, special edition episode. That's so right. if you really want to count that, that would be 10. And our last 10th episode would actually truly be 11. Yes. But you never had a rock in any of those. Nope. This is the first on this show. And oddly enough, the first time I went without a rock is in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And there were four different scotches. Right? All right. Okay. So let's take a let's cheers. cheers and take a smell of it. You know, I do get a uh, kind of like a... Uh, Ooh. I, want to, I don't want to say Jolly Rancher green apple type flavor, it but it's like... apple. It is apple, but it's almost and, and kind of like a sweet candy smell, too. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to quite go Jolly Rancher green apple, though. No. But there's apple, there's candy. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
Good golden color. Yeah, good. Yep, good. Good color there. So this is aged in ex bourbon casks. Okay. I am still, and I'm loving mm. of that. Taste. It's like a, it's like a honey apple, mm -hmm. honey crisp. Yeah, you know what it almost reminds me of? Caramel apples. Ooh, mm-hmm. Um, the finish, it's not hot anywhere through, no, so no. that's nice. That is really nice. And the finish gives me a nice, strong malt flavor. Yeah, it does give you that. I'm not, I'm not tasting like a chocolate, but just the malt from a, a malted milk. You know, I think this would be a great fall scotch. Mm -hmm. I would love drinking this around uh, Halloween time. Oh, yeah. Bobbing for apples and drinking scotch. Yep. <laughs> and scaring the crap out of little kids with the saw. That's right. And for anybody who does listen to this podcast. And Don't. They, <laughs> 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 and if anybody who does listen to this podcast and has attended one of my life insurance classes, you know how much I love horror movies. So this would be a great scotch to drink while, you, while you're watching a horror movie. I concur. And we still got to go to that, that horror, horror bar. Horror bar, yeah. You know, yeah. in a couple of weeks, it'll probably be a lot easier for us to do something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting things about Speyside is that the entire area, Speyside, is actually located in Highland. Get out of here. And therefore, you can typically and will often see, um, see a Speyside scotch also labeled as a Highland scotch. It's the one area where it's legal to do both. You know, it almost makes sense because, you know, I always thought I was an Isla person, but I'm really starting to find out I'm an Island person. Hey, we still have several great Isla scotches, yeah. Yeah, the 16 true. year, but you're, you know, you are right. A lot of the scotches we have tasted have been from the Highland or Speyside region. <laughs> um, and they've all tasted great. great. Yeah. yeah. I would say out of everything that we tasted, there's only one. I was not a fan of. Oh no, not that! <laughs> oh, are we, yes. going, are we going medieval here? <laughs> <laughs> this distillery was built in 1897. We're gonna try to save that other one. <laughs> yeah, we won't bring up the other one. But if you watched any of the other like episodes, you, you know who it is. You know which one it is. Yeah, just look for you know Halloween, black and white, wee beastie. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, you just name dropped it, man. You're doing so good. <laughs> so um i know we uh i i know that we uh normally say where we got our scotch or we have been trying to give props and everything and i know we're not quite done with the tasting area um but since i just brought it up might as well just continue going down this pathway yeah uh, we, once again we did go to uh total wine uh is it is that considered part of centennial or is that inglewood um, I do believe it's considered part of Centennial. It's right off of County Line Road near the Park Meadows Mall. Okay. And I've, I honestly, um, out of all the places that we have been to, I love their scotch selection there. And I love how they, they break it down by the areas. I do too. Great selection. Um, the best in stocks of the different liquor stores we've been to by far. And then the pricing. Oh, uh, yeah. Last week was an eye opener. We stopped at another liquor store, and we're Bevies. We were, yeah, you went to Bevies, and it was kind of shocking some of their prices, um, especially in comparison this time. Seeing that many scotches, not all, but many scotches, were twenty or thirty percent lower in price. Yeah. So, for example, like Lagavulin, mm -hmm. sixteen year, sixteen year. You're talking over a hundred dollars there at Bevies. Mm -hmm. And like, what was it, like 89? 89. 89 at Total Wine. And most of the liquor stores we've seen it at are 119 or higher for that bottle. Exactly. And then there was a couple others that we saw that were exactly the same. Uh, there is the Arbeg one that usually goes, uh, and a lot of stores are using them right around like $110, mm -hmm. $89 yeah. at Total Wine. So uh, once again, uh, if, you ever, if you do go into Total Wine, and you're there, just let them know that you heard about them through Scotch Hour. I know they will, they'll be like, who the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Jesse and Noah. <laughs> Jesse and Noah from Scotch Hour. Yeah. It's a podcast. You Come know on. Noah. 
Yeah, you, you, you know those guys, right? right? Guy always wears uh, a different cap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, oh, you, oh, yeah. So if you haven't noticed that, I do wear a different baseball cap uh, in every show. Uh, I, it, this might be my first double up, I think. Oh man, but we I'm gotta not, edit that out. <laughs> but I'm not positive because I think I wore this in the last, or uh, I had wore it the night of the last episode. But you got a free hat. Bevy's gave me a free hat, so I switched hat. So I'm pretty sure I'm still on track, but there is a slight possibility. Well, I remember that was one big plus of Bevy's. Uh, the service was also great there, too. This isn't yeah. about anything saying one's greater than the other in a sense. Um, it's just our review, our experience, and we're happy to share that. Yeah, you know, with Bevy's, uh, the customer service was great. Like the, the At least the checkout lady was super nice. And she gave me a hat, so I can't complain. Yeah, and the other thing I will absolutely say about Bevy's is that uh, Total Wine, if you were looking for a huge selection, has a great large selection. But Bevy's did have a number of single malts that we were able to find there, and we haven't seen anywhere else. So from that standpoint, their selection was pretty great. Yes, it was. Um, And oddly enough, you know, how I mentioned, like, Bevy's customer service is good, right? And And I liked it. You know what I don't like about Total Wine? Service? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get, I get, you know, how, and, and it's, it is kind of nice that they have people that walk around, they ask you, like, hey, are you finding everything all right, or can we help you out? And I'm assuming the person who comes walking in the scotch area is supposed to be maybe uh, partially uh, an expert for the whiskey mm-hmm. and scotch um, portion of the store. But I don't want to be bothered. Especially when we're just having our own journey. Exactly. And, uh, but I'm sure for some people that kind of a service is a great thing. Um, just for like when we go there, it's just about you and I just talking about what we're going to experience on our, on our podcast. And, and, you know, maybe we should actually talk to them about our podcast and let them know why we're in there. And maybe we can finally get us, maybe (laughs) just maybe. You might actually get a sponsorship or a discount. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a first for everything. It is a first for everything. Okay. Um, anything else that we're getting from this scotch since we uh, took that little sidetrack? Unless you want to talk more about the, the liquor stores. No, I, I'm good. I was just going to add on to your cue there uh, about service. That is one thing that I know from 30 plus years of experience is a big deal to both yourself and myself is what quality of service we get. And um, I have, I, I, I agree. I've had some bad experiences in liquor stores. And um, the worst experience for me, the toughest one is when I go in knowing what I want. And not so long ago, I did go into Total Wine and Liquor, and I was looking for a bottle of Tether. The gentleman and another lady that helped me They were out of stock. I could drive down to the Colorado Boulevard location. They had it in stock reportedly, um, but they recommended two other wines instead. And in comparison, um, I I came home, I did drink the wines, and nothing, nothing, not even a tenth of what Tether is for a price that was not great either. So that is what ruins the service to me is I, I let you know exactly what I'm looking for. You recommend something else and it's not even close. Yeah, that can, that can be difficult. Um, like going in for Gucci shoes and they sell you some Sperry Top Ciders. <laughs> <laughs> so I get that, yeah. But I will say this about Total Wine, uh, and this is another thing that we've talked about, with like especially when we talked about our last, in our last episode about an Italian restaurant. Yes. Um, presentation is everything. Mm-hmm. And Total Wine has a great presentation of how they set up their store and the way it's uh, set up and designed. I totally love it. Like when you go in there, especially in the uh, scotch and whiskey area, you don't, it doesn't, it is a liquor store. It has the shelves and all that stuff. But the way it's designed with like, I kind of, they kind of make it like put like wood floors or something like stain, like dark stained wood floors or whatever. And the the barrels and stuff. It really just makes it, um, a much better presentation. Agreed. And it, you don't feel, really feel like you're in a liquor store, even though you are. At That's least right. In my opinion. All right. Now, this scotch, you know, we're not 
we're not drinking the whole bottle or anything, but yeah. giving us some bad intentions, bad ideas. <laughs> Who knows? Let's revisit Ferris Bueller's Day Off. All right. Oh, man. I mean, I remember this I, show. I haven't, is- that, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. <laughs> All I remember is Bueller. 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 Sir, I heard he's sick. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't like a lot of people think he was dying yeah. or something? Yeah. I mean, it didn't hurt that he called the school and asked to speak to people and said he thought it might be his kidneys playing on his uh, synthesizer there. <laughs> so, all right. Remember that kid? That movie is a kid. And yeah. what a great movie. Very uplifting, happy, go lucky. And the only thing I can think of that has really changed for me. Now that you're older and you're a parent? I'm a parent. I watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and I'm like, this guy is a terrible friend. <laughs> like, Not only a terrible friend, but he's a terrible role model for kids. I know. Missed nine days of school in the final semester of the year. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on. All right, so we got <laughs> ditching school nine times in a semester. We got him convincing his friend to drive around in his dad's Ferrari, which he said that he cannot do right basically just drives it out of the garage without his approval or right. authority uh ditches his friend if i remember correctly somewhere along the way i mean you forget about him right <laughs> <laughs> yeah you forget about your friend the, who's the guy who's dad's ferrari you're driving and then he <laughs> and then he got he like lies to his friend saying like oh yeah you can just put it in reverse and i'll take the miles off and then destroys the car oh Am I really missing anything? It's been a long time. It's like it's been like years since I've seen this. But is there anything else that he does that's like totally terrible to his friend? To, to his friend? And his friend's Cameron, right? Is that what yes, you said? Yes, Cameron. Oh, man, those are the big ones. Do you need to do anything else? <laughs> Maybe he like, hey, Cameron. at what point when you're Cameron? <laughs> if you're Cameron, at what point do you are you like? How's this guy my friend? Why am I friends with this person anymore? Oh, and then they twist it. They turn it at the end. And you're like, oh, you're the best thing that ever happened to me, Ferris Bueller. I'm going to own this wreck and go uh, <laughs> tell my dad it was all me. It's like, what? <laughs> um, it, it is interesting to think because, again, as a kid, it's probably much easier to relate that this father loves this Ferrari. Beautiful Ferrari. Uh, so reportedly more than his son. Supposedly more than his wife. Um, I think it's easy as a kid to to have that experience, not knowing that I don't know any father who's actually like that. Yeah, he tells his kid to stay away from his car because what do kids do when they get into Ferraris? Wreck them. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly, Cameron was wearing a Detroit Red Wings jersey. Mm. Gordie Howe, I believe, is uh, the the jersey it was, or a sweater. If you're more of a traditional hockey fan, yeah. hockey fan, it's a it's a nice sweater. Uh, it's a nice sweater. That's right. Uh, I am a Red Wings fan, so I know I grew up in Colorado. Should be an Avs fan, but I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm a Wings fan. So Nice. Nice. I got to give a shout out for him for wearing the Gord- the Gordie yeah. Howe. And I believe, weren't they, aren't, didn't that pl- take place in uh, Illinois? Yes. Yeah. Which, which, is, which means that they were in Chicago. Yep. And really, you have to wonder about Cameron there, too. Why was he not a Blackhawks fan? Oh, any number of things you can wonder <laughs> about this movie. It is mind-boggling. Um, I mean, let's talk, talk again about Ferris Bueller lying about who he is to get into a restaurant, not paying the bill, most likely. Uh, it just goes on and on and so on. So basically, it promotes <laughs> it promotes bad habits and saying, hey, it's okay if, to, if you can get away with these bad habits and screwing people over. You're the hero. Yeah. Whereas, like, the good person... Right, like his sister, mm-hmm. she gets crapped on the whole time. Yeah, until at the end she lies. Yeah, and then everything's kosher. What? No, 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 <laughs> kids! If you're out there, do not pull these strings. It will not work. Do not do this, please. I will have to say. I mean, as a kid, great. Growing, as a kid growing up, I, I Ferris Bueller day, uh, Ferris Bueller's day off. Incredible movie. I loved it. But now, if I were to reflect upon it as an adult, I'm like, that guy was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> a giant one. Um, yes, for sure. And a terrible role model. Oh, yeah. Um, man, it's, yeah. I was just, I was literally baffled at the extent that it went. I, I'm still just like, how 
again, it has to be because I'm a parent. Please, kids, do not try pulling those shenanigans. Um, yeah. Yeah, not a very, I, I mean, great movie, um, but not, you don't want to use that person as a role model. Now, I did have a very good friend tell me that part of the director and even that area, those famous 80 movies, Pretty in Pink, um, part of the intent was actually to exploit the parents and the troubles or travesties potentially that these kids are growing up with, with parents that are the way they are. And so if that's the case, are we saying that Ferris Bueller's parents are the role models? I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't think you can really say that. I, I don't know either. I, I think if you're going to say anything about maybe like the parents and Ferris, um, is that they were never around. They appeared to not be around. Although the mom, you do see the mom a couple times and then you just hear something bad about Cameron's father, but that's about it. Yeah. In any case, um, should we uh, go into that smarter challenge from last week? Yes, let's do this. All right, so which one do you want to talk about first? Project Looking Glass? Project or... Looking Glass. Okay, so what did you get from Project Looking Glass? I mean, the biggest piece, and we had chatted briefly, is a, kind of like our lost episode, a portal potential um, from one place to another and uh, as we talked about the movie Stargate, great movie. Right. Like literally a great movie. Um, and in my mind, totally possible. Well, yeah. Um, if you, apparently there were um, these seals that were found, Sumerian seals, uh, Egyptian seals, and I forget there was another another set of seals um some the u.s government supposedly um liberated from iraq when we went in there um during the iraqi war and uh, we've taken some from other uh some other countries and um this guy right here uh dan bursch he uh he talks about it and there's a couple of interviews out there and really uh you're right um about the Stargate, but the Stargate is slightly bit different versus uh, Looking Glass because it's a variant of it. The Stargate, when it opens, and it can happen naturally, there's naturally occurring Stargates supposedly uh, throughout mm -hmm. the Earth, and they create wormholes. Exactly. And uh, with the Stargates, just like in the movie, you can pass through it and go somewhere else. Whereas with the Looking Glass, it allow it's a variant of the Stargate, and it only it will allow you to see into the future or possibilities of, in the future and the past. And when I say possibilities of the future, the future is always changing. It's kind of fluid. So when you look, when they use, apparently when they use Project Looking Glass, and they've been using it for years and years and years, uh, especially if, if you are, <laughs> if you if you've spent any time and what I call the tinfoil hat community, <laughs> <laughs> or, or if you, if you, you know, conspiracy theories, then you know they've been look, they've been utilizing Project Looking Glass going back at least to two thousand and six, and it shows probabilities of what the future may entail. So there's a, so they look at uh, you, you, you can see variants of time of uh, possible futures and if enough things occur it will change timelines and when you look at uh i forget I think, i'm not sure if it's dan birch or, or some other guy but he talks about how the illuminati or the deep state uh those people they want us to jump to a certain particular uh timeline and all the things that they're doing is trying to push us into that timeline so that way they can get what they want. That's, uh, that, I mean, that's kind of like what I got from, I mean, did you get anything else? You got more than I did out of it. Uh, but that's basically what it is to me as well is, I guess I still 
consider it like a portal to view. Um, because also, even if it's just so much as an idea, it's sending it out. I mean, do you do you believe that it, it is possible? Oh, absolutely. Do you think it's real? Or are you on the fence that it's real? I'm on the fence that this one is real. I do believe it is completely possible. I fully believe in wormholes. I mean, Elon Musk shot a rocket up, <laughs> uh, SpaceX rocket up into space that just disappeared. That's interesting. Where, why aren't people caring? <laughs> I think because probably people don't know about it. There you go. So with that, though, I do believe wholeheartedly wormholes exist. Um, this piece is just a little bit different for me um, um, because it's not a physical transfer. It's a mental one. All right. So looking at something and being like a mental or, yeah, we'll say mental transition. What do you think about quantum theory or quantum entanglement? I mean, again, totally possible, different realities, different timelines getting intermixed is completely possible. Yeah. I mean, well, because like if there is and supposedly there is probably more than one of these, but there's supposed to be quantum computers out there. Now, quantum computers will look at different possibilities of the future. If mm -hmm. a person does a action, a action, B action, C or action D, these will give all the different variants of what the future will hold. Now, if there are truly quantum computers out there, then it would stand to reason that it'd be quite similar to these uh, these um, looking glass or portals. Yeah, that piece. I again, I fully believe it is entirely possible. Uh, really, we talked about this in another way too. The Terminator. Well, yeah, I think we was a uh, yeah the Terminator, right? We talked about how he uh, it changes the timeline, right? Every time there's a move. Yeah. It, you know, so you, you're on a particular timeline, but a particular item or multiple items that occur or actions that occur will divert the timeline into a new timeline. Yeah. So I do believe it, it is real. I, it, I Here's the thing. If it is real, right, and I, and I believe it is, it's not like the government's going to tell us about it. Well, you never know. I mean, they came out and told us they had alien DNA that they were making a vaccine with, and uh, nobody heard. <laughs> <laughs> they said it on TV. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. They do tell you. They tell you in movies because if the, there's a movie what, called Stargate. There's a TV show called Stargate. These people don't just come up with these ideas like that. Some people might believe that they do, but um, if you start looking into that Project Mockingbird, right, you'll notice that that's a CIA operation or project where they give information to Hollywood or, or to uh, the news medias to uh, basically use as propaganda. Disarm us. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, to pass information into the, into the populace. And uh, when you start looking into more of the uh, nefarious realms of like black magic or whatever, if you believe in this stuff, they have to announce. So in order for their magic to work, they have to announce or present it to the people that they're going to perform their uh, spell on. And so that's why you'll see it in movies and stuff. And oddly enough, that's why you see stuff like, uh, like, the, um, like the Simpsons predicting the future or movies predicting the future or... Uh, one of the biggest ones was the Lone Gunman, the spinoff from uh, X Files. Okay, their very first episode was about a plane that gets hijacked, and I uh, can't remember if the plane was going to crash into the Pentagon or into the Twin Towers. But it was uh, so closely related to nine eleven that it freaked a lot of people out, and it only lasted the one season. Yeah. All right. Well, we know <laughs> you fully believe in that. I believe it's possible. I'm on the fence. Um, but that's where we stand with that one. Now let's look at the second one. Area 51 in Dunway. What's your stance here? 
I totally want to go there and see <laughs> UFOs. <laughs> I know UFOs have to exist. I don't know if the UFOs are man-made or alien technology uh, to where it crashed and then we um, reverse engineered it. Reverse engineered it, but I definitely believe like there are UFOs out there to where um, I, I know at least we have built some UFOs. Um, if you look at like the, I think it's called the Aurora Project or whatever. It talks about a certain kind of propulsion, and it's already it's already been declassified, and uh, the 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 plane or whatever looks like a triangle, and it's like. Poof, Right, um, so I believe some of the things that we see as UFO, as UFOs are man-made. Um, I do believe in aliens, so I would have to think that some of this technology did come from aliens. Um, but some people believe aliens are not actually aliens from other planets, but from other dimensions. Also a possibility. Yeah, definitely. And uh, being that I lived both in Nevada and in Utah. I never went to either one of those places. Can what? You that? I know. No way. All yeah. right. Road trip confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, much like yourself, I believe that aliens clearly have to exist, do exist. I do believe in unidentified flying objects or even identified flying objects, deemed ide- unidentified. <laughs> um, fully believe in that. Love going down to Roswell. The, yeah, you went there, right? Yeah, the, the museum is fun. It is, you know, if you've watched a few seasons. Um, a few seasons of what? Of anything that really describes it. It can be the X-Files. Um, it can be, I mean, George Flukakalas. <laughs> you talking about the guy with the funny hair from yeah, Ancient man, I Aliens? I love that guy, Ancient Aliens. I love that show, by the way. It is a great show. If you watch any of those shows for a season or two. Did you ever read the book, um, uh, The Chariot, Chariot of the Gods by Eric Von Daniken? No, I have not it, read it yet. It's a really an easy read. Uh, and uh, totally, like, you read what his theory is about... Uh, about who we think are the gods and about aliens visiting earth and stuff like that. Highly possible. Cause he, he, the way he does uh, talks about it is like, we actually already have technology that can get close to, and as far as when it comes to space travel, close to getting to the speed of light. And he's like, if you go, right, if we have a, if we have that technology now and we went to like another planet that had life forms on there that were, um, kind of like maybe equivalent to like our prehistoric man, with our technology, they would think that we were gods. Mm-hmm. And why wouldn't we think the same thing if, if we had somebody came that came here? Absolutely. It is still, it's amazing. You mentioned also what you see in movies often is... Disseminated? Yeah, it is a piece of information given to media to make it look at, like it's so impossible that it couldn't be, um, that it's entirely possible. And one movie that I think is absolutely part of that class is Alien versus Predator. And you talk about the pyramids all over the world. How did they get there? How did man make these? What was their purpose? What was their function? Yeah, do you honestly believe that the, that the pyramids were created by a bunch of slaves? I do not, no. <laughs> I mean, in the sense that there were gods, a.k.a. aliens, using us as slaves, there's probably bits and pieces to that truth. Uh, but the... There's no way. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, you pay people right now to do work, right? And they do sh- they do a crappy job. <laughs> 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 are you telling me with the precision that they have how the pyramids are built, you're going to get a bunch of a bunch of slave laborers or people being whipped and stuff to, to create it in such precise manner that the way it's designed also equals like the circumference or the diameter of the earth and all that kind of crap. No way. Uh, yeah. And just perfectly matches the stars where they are today. Um, let alone yeah, where I, they were. I'm not then. buying it. <laughs> I am not buying that. Like I, like, all the historians or all the history and stuff like that, that are trying to tell me like, it, the Egyptians had uh, the Jewish slaves build those. Not buying it. Nope. I mean, like another movie. I will not buy that for a dollar. 
<laughs> How about two dollars? No. Uh, you know, another I want my two dollars. Yeah. Another way to look at it is also Transformers. So another version of Alien, whether that's entirely possible or not, it's not impossible. But then also, what better place than a giant pyramid to hide something you don't want found in space? Yeah, true. I mean, I don't think you're going to have a big, huge transformer, like, semi-truck in there or anything like that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't know. (laughs) It is possible, I guess. Anything is possible. But, yeah, I just don't, uh, yeah, I'm not buying that. All right, I agree. Did you, uh, being that we talked about ancient aliens. Ancient aliens love it. There is the uh, other guy that uh, pops up on there every once in a while is uh, Zach Zachariah Zetchin. Mm-hmm. Did you ever read his uh, Earth Chronicle books? I did not. Those things are a trip too. All right, what are they about? Well, there's uh, I believe there's nine or ten books to the series, and it just kind of breaks down talking about the Anunnaki and okay. uh, Nibiru, which is Planet X, and how they created humans as a slave labor to mine gold and stuff like that. Um, it's a uh, pretty wild theory. and uh, But entirely possible. But Yeah, it's entirely possible because if you read the Sumerian tablets, which uh, apparently Zachary Zetchin is one of the most, most well, uh, I guess one of the most well-versed people in those higher, gri- high, high-o. Hieroglyphs? Yeah. He got it, that word. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to be able to read those uh, those clay tablets, nice. Um, so yeah, it's a, it, it is a, it talks about like um, how even the, those Sumerian tablets it mentions like how many planets are in our solar system and stuff like that, and how do they know that? Like, how do they know about Pluto? We didn't even know about Pluto until we had telescopes. They're smarter than we are. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, there's even African tribes, right? Remember? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, what is it? Um, it wasn't one of those ancient aliens. Did you see that episode where they had talked about those African tribes? Mm-hmm. I think it was the Doji, Dongis, or... Yeah. I guess with the D, I thought, or something like that. But anyway, It's not a cryptocurrency. Doge, <laughs> Dogecoin is. <laughs> All right. You know, one thing we forgot to make mention of was dinner this evening. Um, the food was good. Uh, Hickory Smokehouse. What did you think? All right. When you approach uh, Hickory Smokehouse, it says that they have the best ribs in Colorado. <laughs> I'm going to call BS. All right. Uh, was the food good? It was edible. I wouldn't say it's the best barbecue I have had. Um, it was it enjoyable. Yes. Atmosphere. I think it's outdated. Um. When you look at it from the outside, it looks like a, a cabin. And uh, when you go inside, it looks like a, uh, what someone thought a cabin would look like in a, maybe like 60s with terrible lighting. Um, it just seemed kind of dungy inside um, and dirt. I don't want to necessarily say dirty, but um, it just kind of gave that kind of more of a I guess kind of more of an old, dirty look or feel to it. Whereas nowadays, like when you go to a nice restaurant, it's, it has like, has a, it's bright, has a clean lines to it. Um, very crisp looking type of feel. So I guess it, it depends. If you want to kind of take a step back into like the 70s or 60s, maybe a, <laughs> good, maybe a good atmosphere for that. Um, food was decent, but not great. And but the one thing I will say I do like about the place, it didn't. It does. It, when you went in there, it did not feel like COVID ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for myself, a couple of things I, I will mention: the environment or the atmosphere wasn't as much of a put off to me as it was to you. But that is a, one of those things that you and I absolutely do focus on. It was a little more nostalgic to me. To your point. 
not modern. I'm okay with that knowing I'm going in, but it's all to your point again, not exciting. It wasn't some place where I'm in there and I want to look at the pictures on the walls. Well, and that might be the difference too. You've been there before. I haven't, so I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the service I did think was really great. You thought it was really great. I thought it was really great. I think, I think she tried too hard. All right. So here, here's a, here. I, I know it's a fine line, especially for those people who are in the service industry. Mm -hmm. But there's, I think there's a point where a person approaches the table too much, and they and they ask you too often, like, "Are you doing okay?" And I, when you get that, sometimes it feels like you're being rushed or something. And I, I see what you're saying, and perhaps part of my expectation. You mentioned your expectation being the first time you'd gone there. Part of my expectation with a barbecue joint isn't the same as what I expect from an Italian restaurant. I expect exactly what you're speaking about when I go to Italian. I want it looking clean and feeling clean. I want the environment great. I want it modern. I want the service to be there watching me, knowing that my glass needs to be filled, but not interrupting me, just filling it and moving on. So I fully agree with those pieces with barbecue. It's a little different for me. Um, so, so it met my expectations. Honestly, I felt like I was like probably, uh, in, uh, Friday the 13th. <laughs> yes. You yes. Know, waiting for Jason to jump out of a corner and, and uh, take the machete and chop my head off or something. All right. Well, they need, you know, ribs and brisket for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I agree with you 100% about the food. Good. Not great. Um, I, I, as far as barbecue, I would prefer to go to Brothers Barbecue. There's a lot of places I would prefer to go to. And again, part of that's the atmosphere. And I, I know you mentioned a couple of times. I never mentioned this to you before, but you have brought up GQ a couple of times. And there's a GQ up in uh, Westminster or Broomfield area. Yes, GQ Barbecue. I swore to God I would never go to that place. Really? Yeah. I had such a terrible, like right when uh, COVID first, I guess, started. Okay. And... Uh, the mask mandate wasn't quite out yet, and they did say, like, uh, there were still ways to get around the mask mandate, but they, right. they treated me like such crap because I didn't want to wear my mask. Mm. And you know how I feel about wearing masks. But uh, so I uh, swore I would never go in there by the way they treated me. All right. Well, that, that doesn't is mean, fair. That's, but that's but that particular one. doesn't mean I won't try the one up here. All right. But... Uh, that's why I've been kind of reluctant to go. Poor to that experience. Place. There yeah. you go. I understand that. I, I fully understand that. Uh, with that, though, again, the food good, not outstanding. I actually made mention to you, I am looking forward to making ribs here and having you try my ribs because I think you'll be much more impressed. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, too. Ah, <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, so good dinner. Thank you again. Did enjoy it. Uh, I will say this. If, you, if I mean, if you want to, like like I said, you want to take a step back into, like, a different decade or a dec uh, different era, uh, you want something that's, like, they give you a lot of food. Okay, It was a lot of food. It, they give you a lot of food. So the quality or the amount of food you get for the price, I give it an A+. Plus. Uh, if you want that nostalgic feeling of going like of the 60s, 70s and, and the cabin feel. Yeah, it is a cabin feel. Uh, I, I would give that probably like a maybe C plus, B minus. Okay. Uh, for me personally, I don't like, I'm not a big log cabin fan. So even like Park Meadows, like it has that, like that cabin look to it, um, that mall. I'm, I'm not a fan of it because of that cabin look. I'm just not a cabin type of person but. all right <laughs> uh, so that that's part of that that for me though uh the service i think depending on what you like for service uh that could be i'll also give i'll give like an a minus um i just think she probably visited our table a little bit too much i want it i want it don't get me wrong i want a, a uh, attentive service person but i don't want them to come and ask me every five minutes i don't mind if they come walking by and taking a look but I don't want them to bug me like every five minutes. I can ap totally appreciate that. Yeah. So that, that, that's how I would rate it. All right. Well, if you guys know of some great barbecue places, we should not hesitate to visit. Shoot us a, a bit of information. Leave us a message on one of our very 
many social medias now. Um, <laughs> give us an do you, idea. Do you know what we're on? Oh, man. Podbean. Um, all sorts of things, man. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> yeah, okay, you got two of them. <laughs> um, YouTube. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just know we're on stuff. <laughs> We are on stuff. <laughs> you have done a great job getting us on multiple media, friends, and I truly appreciate that. Oh, no, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you do a lot for you do a lot for our podcast too. So, um, I mean, if it wasn't for you, we probably haven't tried as many scotches <laughs> as uh, we have. So, uh, you know that, that that's awesome. All right, Re- revisiting that to that point, the scotch. Um, the Dalwini Winter's Frost Edition. Winter Highland Frost. Single malt scotch from Speyside. <laughs> By the way, right now, winter is not coming, but it's not going away either. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> it's snowing two days ago. What the heck, Colorado? All right. All right, what are you thinking now? I'm liking it. I, I'm enjoying it as well. I mean, if I didn't have work tomorrow mm-hmm. and I uh, probably have to be do uh, adulting, I would definitely... Uh, Enjoy the rest. After enjoying the rest, <laughs> my kidney, my or my liver might not like me tomorrow, but uh, yeah, I'd be definitely down to to kill this thing. All right, I agree. Um, again, I really this time without cubes tasting it, really enjoy that apple scent, the apple flavor, which then blends into you do uh, get slight honey, but not oh really. yeah. Just a little bit, but uh, definitely for me, yeah, I definitely think of like caramel apple, mm-hmm. bobbing for apples in the fall. More of that malt flavor without the cube for me, which I enjoy. Not everyone does. I love that flavor. Yeah, you know, um, I it's not that I don't mind the uh, not not drinking it without a cube. So I might if I if I do indulge again in the future. I will probably try it with other kids. Oh, like we'll that. indulge again in the future. This will <laughs> not go left alone. She will come out of the closet very soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see. Last week uh, was my Smarter Challenge. Yes. So let's just do a quick recap uh, since we are nearing our hour. And being that we actually have a timer, we know yeah. we're not going to go two hours <laughs> two again. And, so. hours. <laughs> and then lose all the material. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Yes. Uh, the last episode. All right. So we recapped our last episode. That being um, uh, the, scotch, the scotch that we tried, which um, we both were in agreement mm-hmm. that we liked the, ne- the Nectar de Or, uh, which was uh, aged in Sauterne casks. Yes. Uh, we both mentioned what our favorite episode was, which was episode three. And, you know, and to, if, if I remember correctly, you asked our audience, which probably will never hear this because <laughs> of the last episode, but you said, did we go, did we get too far? Uh, what, what was it? How did you state it? Um, you, you said you asked to put in the comments the way we, uh, did episode three. Did you like it? Or did we step over the boundaries too much? Right. That is correct. Let us know what you liked and didn't like. Um, and, and if there is a particular favorite episode that you liked from our first 10 episodes, including the Star Wars special, but not including the last episode, the last 10th episode, uh, please leave that in the comments about which one was your favorite. Um, we did talk about what the smarter challenge was on that one, which was our investments. Uh, you, uh we, we did it as a hundred dollars pretending like it was a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. In which case you, the victor would have made $407. I would have made 392. So it, week one, week one, still early. Week Got one, still early. And, uh, <laughs> I have, I have the edge, but barely. All right. I'm gonna. You'll see me next week. I might be wearing <laughs> lipstick. I'm like, come on, doctor. <laughs> if you start wearing lipstick, Yo. I'm gonna have to start being like, what was that? Was that Buffalo Bill or Wild Bill? <laughs> it puts the lotion on its skin, or it gets the hose again. <laughs> Everyone needs a shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! All right. Uh, 
That is, uh, hey, that Silence, slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. That was actually a really good movie. It is a great movie. Uh, that guy was a little bit freaky, though. Yes. Uh, but what a great line, though. Like, mm-hmm. I like. I don't remember a ton of lines in that in that movie, but I, I after seeing that movie, that was like first time seeing that movie. Like that that particular line stuck in my head because it was just that creepy and weird. He w- did it perfectly. And then how does the guy recover <laughs> and uh, go to the show Monk for so many seasons? <laughs> like I thought he'd have been done for him in that line. Uh, no, you're not my boss. I'm out. <laughs> Monk's like, this is cool. <laughs> um. So, yeah, so we talked about that. Uh, then last week's challenge, uh, was, which was Project Looking Glass, um, we did talk about how that is basically a variant of the star, of a Stargate and how you can see the future and the uh, probable future. Possible, yes, probable. And, uh, you can de- and you can see the past. And I'm going to just throw this out here, and I know um, – I'm going to have to be kind of careful about how I say this because of YouTube, but there's a, uh, a particular group of people who, uh, use that, uh, look at things politically and, uh, they, they would listen to someone who would post on a certain platform and it goes by a certain letter in the alphabet. And, uh, that particular anonymous person um, talked about Project Looking Glass. All right. And the probable futures. Uh, we also talked uh, real, real briefly about uh, Area 51 and uh, Dungway Improving Grounds. Mm-hmm. And, and then, uh, so I believe this week that kind of leads, oh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and how he is a terrible role model. What? Yeah. Do you want that guy as your friend? No. No. Terrible friend. No. Terrible role model. And if I was a parent, I don't think I would want him as a child. Yeah. I mean, I think you're better off dead picking any <laughs> one of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> picking, you know, any one of the guys from The Hangover and having them be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think all the guys in The Hangover were great, except for the guy... Who uh, was locked upstairs on the bed, the mattress? You know, yeah, he's pretty plain Jane compared to the but, others. But that, but the four, the four knuckleheads. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a doctor. You're a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's a great movie. It uh, is. It is. Okay. Uh, so I believe this week's Smarter Challenge falls on you. It does. Smarter Challenges. All right. So you can read the book or you can watch the movie. I don't know which one you'll choose. I'm guessing you're going to do the movie. Great what? Expectations, written by Charles Dickens. Um, and or you can watch the Ethan Hawke, Gwyneth Paltrow movie. No, I would rather watch the <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio version. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, I would. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's Ethan Hawke and Gwyneth Paltrow. If you can watch them both, if you want to watch them both, I'll watch Oh, wait, them. wait. Yeah, you're talking about something else. I, was, I am talking about something else. I'm talking about the Fitzgerald uh, book. F. Scott Fitzgerald, yeah. Yeah, what's on, The Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby. That's yeah, this the one is I Great seen. Expectations. This one's a little bit different. I, I'm not going to read that book again. Yeah, so watch the movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, that, that is the challenge. Is the movie close enough to the book? Oh man. I don't know that any movie can be even remotely close to a book. That's that great. Charles Dickens was such a, an amazing. Yeah, I just don't know if I have enough time to read the book. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Don't, don't read the book. The movie will, will cover the points. Okay. What points am I looking for? You're just going to watch the movie, and then we'll talk about it. What sticks out, what jumps out, and yeah, why. Yeah, it's been forever since I read that book, because that was like one of the required readings, I think, mm-hmm. in grade school oh. or high school or you something. You went to a good grade school. <laughs> <laughs> was it grade school, or did it's we have to read? Typically, it? it's middle or high school. All right, so it might have been high school. might have been Miss Rory's uh, class. Oh, man, I remember Rory. <laughs> did you have her for English? Uh, yeah, it was like advanced placement American lit, I think. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember having her because we had to 
Uh, I do definitely remember us doing um, Caesar, mm-hmm. um, Shakespeare's Caesar in there. Yeah. That was like, uh, I think that might have been freshman year. Yeah. It, the the basic premise here is you have Pip who grows up very poor. Right. Um, later with a turn of events. And I think the movie does a good job showing these events. Um, he makes a friend who ultimately then repays him in his future when he becomes an artist and then becomes a very, very wealthy artist with that turn he now gets a piece not so dissimilar from Great Expectations of a life he wanted, um, not knowing what he really wants in life. And it's kind of interesting to, for me, I, I love the book. I love the movie. I think they actually did a very nice job with that movie. Uh, but I love the book and I love the movie. And it is one of those pieces where you have people who are ultimately self-made, but it's not always one piece that made them. A lot of times it's a relationship from their past that comes back up to grant them well, greatness. That's why you're always supposed to treat people well, because you never know. And uh, when a good deed in the past might come being, you know, might come back to pay, pay you back in the future. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so with that, um, did you want to start your clothes first or you want me to do my clothes first? I'll let you start right. the proceedings. So I just want to say thank you for those who decided to listen to us. Uh, we are once again Rumble. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is a, that is one. We are on Rumble <laughs> and YouTube. Those are our two video platforms. As far as audio, we've actually expanded that expanded that quite a bit. We are now on Google Podcasts. We are on Audible Podcasts. We are on Amazon Music Podcasts. We are on Spotify, and we are on Podbean. And uh, we would greatly appreciate if you became a patron of ours uh we do have memberships starting at low as uh one dollar to be a patron that's uh one dollar a month and uh, we have different uh types of the uh t- different tiers and the higher the tier the more um i guess perks you'll get one of the big perks that we have from our uh, from one of our patrons uh which chose the uh 20 to i think the 20 to 50 dollar range mm-hmm. is going to be a frame with uh that's going to be is it going to be signed by both of us yes that's going to be signed by both of it's us a personal message with a personal message and has a label uh so it's going to be a frame label of uh one of the scotches that we've uh talked about here on scotch hour that's right uh, once again, I do appreciate all of you joining us. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. And with that, I will wish you all a wonderful evening. Yeah, myself as well. Please leave feedback. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like when we gone too far, when we haven't gone far enough. Um, what draws you in? What pushes you away? Uh, give us a few little pieces, please. I, 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 it is some of your time. We greatly appreciate. Invest just a little bit. And, yeah, let us know what you want us to talk about. Give us some topics. Um, we, and Noah mentioned earlier, as things are opening up, we're finally going to take that chance and make that opportunity to go to the horror bar. Um, we're going to do that as yes. one of the many Can't things we'll be do doing. That. Um, and, uh, we've got some other great experiences that some will be invited to and others might be invited to that, um, we won't share just yet because not everyone's invited, um, <laughs> including trips to different areas, movies, things like that. Oh yeah. We, we were playing, we're uh, trying to run out of movie theater yes. for uh, Top Gun 2. Yes, absolutely. We got it. We got we it. Got it. <laughs> we got to do that. Um, you know, let us know. Maybe you're like, Hey, Jesse and Noah, you guys got to tell us which one's better, hip hop or jazz. <laughs> <laughs> hip hop all day long, man. Jazz. <laughs> West Coast, man. Um, so California loving. Oh, man. This is like Jay Z over here. Actually, I guess that's East no. Coast. So uh, yeah. you're G Easy over there. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking Tupac, man. California loving. <laughs> Dr. Dre. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Yeah. <laughs> Right. By the way, I tried his wine. Oh, I would not trust anything by <laughs> Snoop Dogg except it's a Nineteen Crimes wine. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would. The only thing I would trust to try from Snoop Dogg would probably be pot. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> or maybe a 40 ounce. There you go. Um, but with that, thank you guys for enjoying our show. Hopefully, <laughs> um, at least giving us a little bit of your time. Please um, leave us feedback, give us ideas, oh, topics, things be- you want to talk about. Before you say goodbye, I want to say this. If there is a bottle of scotch out there that you guys want us yes. to talk about, please put it in the comments and then we will call you. And you can be on the podcast with us. Yeah, share your thoughts, please. Yes. So go ahead, you can finish. Oh uh, no, that that's the biggest piece is um, thank you for giving us a little bit of your time. We do truly appreciate it. Hopefully, you're having a little bit of fun listening to us, watching us, uh, or even just a, a fraction as much fun as we have so, uh, sharing these moments and conversations, um, and also learning. That's part of this for us. So hopefully, you guys are getting that same experience. Uh, With that, I say thank you and good night. Cheers. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this evening's episode of Scotch Hour. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you have not done so already, please become a patron member with memberships starting as low as $1 a month. Thank you and hopefully you have a wonderful evening.